for victims in tribal regions of Pakistan, Yemen and Afghanistan, it's the last sound heard before bloodshed ensues. A constant whirring that gets louder before it becomes visible. But for residents of the quiet coastal town of Aberporth in West Wales, the sound of looming carnage is synonymous with daily life. This is the area where the RAF tests its watchkeeper drone from. As you can see, there's one taking off behind me as we speak. In good weather, the drones take off throughout the day and during the night. And as you can hear, the noise is so high-pitched and dominating that local residents have called this area the buzz box. The noise pollution serves as a reminder of the suffering that the unassumingly named unmanned aerial vehicles inflict elsewhere in the world. For local people the noise is a great disturbance because there's a, um, a whining noise and uh, they fly over this area quite regularly. I don't think they're doing something good because they are killing people, okay, it's a different side that's been killed. Uh, the people in the British people, the British military are not being killed, but the, the Afghans are being killed, the uh, uh, Pakistanis are being killed, and the Yemenis are being killed. Um, so killing people is killing people. The Welsh government billed it as a state-of-the-art technology park that would create four to five hundred much-needed jobs for the community. More broken promises. The reality, a half-deserted site where the Ministry of Defence employs about 30 people to help test the watchkeeper. There is a sense of, of frustration in the area at the lack of um, imagination and um, development of the local economy. Clearly, um, the UAV technology development here has not delivered jobs to the area. A number of people who were for it in the beginning are now opposed to it because they didn't realise the level of nuisance that there was going to be. They didn't publicise the consultation well enough and so, you know, I think it was a sham. Those behind the development of drones say it means less soldiers come home from war zones in body bags, but civilian casualties are piling up. The UK has undertaken 349 drone strikes in Afghanistan as up until this week. Uh, the UK insist that only four civilians have been killed in those uh, 349 drone strikes. We know from Pakistan that somewhere around two to three thousand people have been killed in the same number of drone strikes. So either the UK is 100 to 200 times better at this than the US Air Force or there's something seriously wrong with those drone figures. Because of these unmanned systems, it's a lot easier to go to war, and therefore there will be much more warfare, and the world isn't safer. The British government has already spent two billion pounds on development, but they're about to commit another two billion on a new armed drone under the scavenger program. Of course it could be better to spend, uh, it could be spent on hospitals and uh, schools rather than on killing machines. Despite drastic government cuts on welfare spending, financing for the drones isn't up for debate. In West Wales, millions are being poured into the watchkeeper without any result. It's already running two years late. To the dismay of locals, the daily testing, along with the blood-curdling noise, drones on. Polly Boyko, RT, West Wales.